Here we have an MSI laptop that came in for no power. We already disassembled the board. I do not know the model number on the laptop, but I'll find out and I'll leave it in the title. That's one big board. I see three fans here. One, two, and three. We still have the heat sink on. Rams, one and two. And this one does not look like it has built-in ramps, so we only have two sticks right here. Big board. I always go like this. I don't know why. Big board. Laptop came in for no power. And we're going to have to inspect and see why the board is not powering on. Let's go over to the microscope. We're going to start with the DC power connector like we always do. And the DC power connector is all the way right here. Right here, the flex cable. The flex cable extends all the way right here. You see the red and the black. And we should have two power MOSFETs right there. And the first power MOSFET looks like it's a bit crooked, but I do not think that's because of anybody tampering with the board. Just a factory thing. They did not solder the MOSFET on properly, but as long as the pins are making a connection, then it's not a big deal. Meter in diet mode. Zero point four voltage drop. That's what we care about right at the current sense resistor. 0.4, so we do not have a short circuit. Usually, a short here could indicate a V-core short circuit or a dead CPU. But in this case, in our case here, 0.4 voltage drop, that's perfect. Maybe we can do a quick visual inspection. We did not remove the heatsink, but we can still do a quick visual inspection. Oh, look at this. We have a hole here. We have a hole in the chip. KB, that's a super I.O. chip. Wow. We do not have a donor laptop if, in fact, that's the problem. But I do see a hole in the chip. A hole in the chip is a problem. A hole in the chip is definitely a blown IC. There's no guesswork. Maybe it's the chip, maybe it's not the chip. It's the chip. The chip is blown. That was fast. Let's continue with visual inspection. Do I see a cracked MOSFET here? I see something going like this. That may be nothing, but something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's probably nothing. I'm starting to see things. That's the problem. So that's the gate right here. The gate is reading 0 0.5. Perfect. We do not really care about this chip right now. Our PCH right here. A lot of viewers are now thinking what caused that Super I.O. chip to blow. Maybe you should do your thesis on it, your PhD. You can analyze the board and let me know. I do not see anything else wrong on this side of the board. If we flip the board, Just want to make sure we do not have corrosion, liquid damage, or anything crazy. Because 90% of customers will not tell you if there's liquid damage or if they spilled something on the board, which is fine. We'll just figure it out, fix it, and charge accordingly.
No big deal. I do not see signs of liquid on that board, but the components, they look a bit dark, which is not a big deal. You see, as soon as we brush them, they are shining again. So the only thing I see wrong with the board right now, based on visual inspection, is the Super I.O. chip. And I do not even know if we can buy that chip from the U.S. or if we have to program that chip or if there's anything else wrong with the board. A lot of questions. Let's plug the charging cable and we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see if anything on the board has any signs of life. So I have the cable plugged in right here. And we do see something hot on the board. Maybe the Super I.O. chip. Nothing else is hot on the board except for this area right here. What's this? Let me grab a plastic spudger. If you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby, you can purchase the plastic spudger off our site along with all the other tools that we carry and sell, such as soldering station, hot air station, thermal camera, power supply, Original Amtec Flux, Braidwick, Tweezers, everything that we use on our bench, we carry and sell in our store. All items are in stock. Just order, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. If you have ordered from us before, you know how fast we ship. If I put the plastic spudger over that chip, let's go under the microscope and see which chip is this. It's not the Super I.O. chip, it's something else. Right here. Oh, this one is the 1285B, same chip that's used on an Asus laptop. It ends with an A rather than a B, but B or A, they are the same chip. This one is a dual synchronous tap-down controller with 5 volts and 3.3 volts LDO. 99% the problem is not the chip because I see it on Asus laptops all the time where that chip is burning hot. And I replaced that chip so many times on Asus laptops, and it's not the culprit. Why don't we measure around the chip? No short. No short. And look at this. We have a short here. Let me go to ohms mode. Maybe we have low resistance. If we measure here, 4 ohms. I do not know if 4 ohms is normal in this area. We have zero ohms, zero ohm reading here, and we have a four ohm reading here. Again, I do not know if four ohm reading here is good. Measuring that chip on an Asus laptop, none of the caps around the chip has low resistance. But here, we almost have it that short, but it's not. A four ohm resistance. Why don't we try to inject voltage at the four ohm side of the cap? I'm just curious what happens if we inject voltage on that side of the cap. Let's inject maybe 1.2 volts. And what happens if we inject 1.2 volts right at the 4 ohm side of the capacitor? Look at this. The Super I.O. chip. Wow. I inject voltage here at the cap under the 1285B chip and the Super IO chip gets hot. The question right now is where would we get this Super IO chip from? Let me search it online quick. I may pause the video so you do not keep looking at my face while I'm trying to search this up. And look at this. I found one on AliExpress for $49. I looked on eBay, $55, $56 for that chip, and all of them are coming from China. Right now, a lot of questions. The chip is $49. That glove is broken like I've never seen before. Get rid of it. 
Right now, the situation is a bit tough. The chip is not cheap, $49. There's no guarantee that installing the chip will fix the laptop. Maybe the motherboard has other issues that we may or may not be able to figure out. We're going to have to let the customer know. And I think if the customer want to move forward with the repair, we're going to ask him to order that chip. I'm not going to order that chip. I'll ask the customer to order it, send it over to us. If it works, great. If it does not work, we're going to have to figure out if there's anything else wrong with the board and if we can fix the board. We may or may not be able to fix the board if resoldering the I.O. chip does not fix the problem. We also have to figure out if we need to reprogram that chip or if the BIOS will reprogram that chip. I think I'm going to research this before I let the customer know and we'll take it from there. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. We're going to end the video right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.